Okay, well, someone asked me if I could do a tutorial on this. Basically, it's Harry Potter and he's doing magic, but I lost the cache so I can't scroll through it. But this is a uh, sphere of... I don't even know, but the resolution's at like 50, so it's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 80,000 particles. <laughs> And then his wand also generates a lot of particles too. I think his wand generates about 12,000. Let's see. Yeah, 12,000 particles. So it's essentially a 100,000 particle simulation. So it makes it look all pretty. So I got source links in the description for where you can get Harry Potter. This is from the first Harry Potter video game. So it's not very low poly and he's massive so basically you'll want to shrink him down but uh, what I did initially was uh, I spawned him so now he looks like that and actually what we're gonna do I'll do it later We'll give him his materials later, but right now we need to give him a skeleton because it's the only way to animate him. And since I'm lazy and I don't really think I want to spend time rigging him up with a real skeleton, we're going to give him the blender fabricated skeleton, which is what I did before. Uh, basically, it looks like that. But now we're going to be like, Joo! make it really big. Match its size. I love it. It's about maybe that big. And then we rotate it. And then that's pretty much it. I go to edit mode. And then you'll basically edit the skeleton to whatever you want so that it'll be fitting this whole thing properly. So what I did initially was, ah, shit. Okay, so once you have everything approximated to where you feel like it's where it should be, like I just did, then you would select all the mesh parts, just so you know where they are. You want everything selected because that's basically what you're trying to go for here. Then you'll select any part of the thing and then just go control P and then do with automatic weights. Then you should be able to go like woo. And then and nothing's perfect. There, now he's perfect. You just be like do. And then you'll just kind of rotate everything around and everything. So it's yeah, this is a nice thing about the pre-made blender rig is that it's ready for anything, pretty much. Um, so now we'll go to materials. Actually, that's right, we want to make him smaller because he's just way too big. Uh, so we'll go to object mode and just shrink him down. That's it. Just shrink him down to a respectable size. <laughs> Something uh, right about. Hey, hey, you behave yourself, Harry. Then you'll just kind of grab a ball and just be like, doot. And this will be the ball that floats up in the air and just kind of sits there like blur. And then just kind of looks at him like, I'm going to kill you. And then Harry's like, Not if I kill you first. And it's like, Arr. Anyways, um, then you just kind of add some ground, a little plane here. So you got a sphere, you got a plane, you got Harry Potter. <laughs> and also, real quick, if you're in cycles, you want to change the light. To use nodes and turn it to eh, usually I use my myself put that two and then I change the size to point two point zero two I'm sorry point zero two then when you hit render the shadow looks decent so then we'll go to his body and actually that's right you want to open up a new kind of window here. This is what I do. I, I personally don't mind if the window for the node editor is small, but some people just go like, Hugh! make it really big. But that's up to you. So then you'll go to your data location, wherever you stored the zip archive. And there's one 
picture in there, and that's basically his texture. And then once you're in there, actually, no, sorry, no, there's not just one picture, there's many pictures. Um, so what you'll do is you'll grab a part that you know has a certain mesh, like the hair, and you'll look in the textures, and it'll say SK Harry Texture 0, or SK Texture 1, 2, or 3, and those go to their respective meshes and it'll automatically apply because it's already been texture wrapped for you so you don't want to go into edit mode and unwrap it because then he won't be Harry Potter he'll be a mess of polygons I mean I know this is kinda lazy to use someone else's thing actually this is from the video game Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone so whoever made that gets the creds. So you'll notice that his glasses look kinda odd and if we go to rendered mode they look like he's just wearing some cool sunglasses. Well we don't want him wearing cool sunglasses. He's Harry Potter. He needs to wear his, his spectacles. So, ah shit. Get out of there. Then you'll add a mix shader kind of put it between the diffuse and the surface. You move the diffuse point to the bottom then you'll add a oh, where is it? Transparent shader. Then we're almost there. Then you take the alpha from the texture, put it there and now Harry's got glasses. Although in the material mode you'll still see the shades but don't worry about that. That's just how it is. And that's pretty much it. Harry's now made. Now you'll notice he doesn't have a wand. He doesn't come with a wand. That's just how it is. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add a cone. Let's kind of look at the cone here, pressing Z so we can see how big it is. Uh, we want to put it at a depth of maybe one. Yeah, let's do a depth of one. And the radius should be, let's try 0 0.04 and see what it looks like. Yeah, that's Harry's, I can see that being Harry's wand. Let's see. The default amount of vertices is fine, although um, you can put triangle fan if you want. Uh, doesn't really matter, but it does help. Personally, I did Triangle Fan the first time, so I'm doing it again just because consistency matters. Okay, then now we got the cone. We'll just put it up in Harry's hand. The cone needs to be a dark color. It doesn't need to be any specific color. You can move the color wheel around to any one of these circle colors, and you can just pick whichever one you want. I'm just going to give him kind of a that color and just kind of make it really dark. You don't want it to be black, you want it to be close to dark but not black because you know it's a wand. It's not it's not solid black. Anyways, um, you know it doesn't look like much but it goes to the low poly theme of having Harry Potter being low poly so now you'll notice that this is probably a little bigger than the one that I featured in my little video test but that's just because that was a test. It's not really designed to be anything. So this is also a good time to look at the hands and see if the hands work or not. Oh, well, I'm pretty sure they work. Okay, so um, I'm going to grab his hands. Just going to move them down. Perfect. They're actually even at the right spot, too. Then you want him to just kind of make a grabby look with his hands. You also notice the low poly of the hands doesn't exactly conform to the fingers because he's only got, <laughs> you know, it's like that. So he doesn't really need a lot. The only one that might actually look like it's grabbing anything is this one. But that's, that's debatable because look at that. It doesn't have enough polygons to make the third finger look like it's doing a third finger action because... That's just how it is. But having more bones and more poly than the polygons is, I guess, 
cool if you wanted to look like that. But that's okay. So you're going to want to basically just put it approximately in his hand. You don't need it to be perfect, it just needs to be close enough to where it looks like he's holding it. Because, again, this is a low poly character that has no real idea of what he's supposed to be doing. Ain't that right, Harry? Woo! And actually, no, you wouldn't do that. You would go to copy it, paste it, then you would move it up one. Then you would go to edit mode for this one. Then you would uh, make it small. Because this is the particle emitter that will be emitting the particles. Because you can't have it coming from its actual wand. Because it'll just be odd. Because I tried it before and it didn't work. It just doesn't do well with single points. So you got to make it come out of more points in one point. So, then you grab the ball. And just be like, I'm going to make you to a million pieces. And so, for speed's sake and whatever, we're going to tell it to use the default resolution of 10. And that'll be that. Then you put it up 1. And you give it a lifetime of, I don't know, 400. Anything that's long enough that you'll see the particles hit the ground. <laughs> and whatever. So, okay, so this may be a low resolution thing. So we're going to go to size deflect. You're going to want to change it to a fluid setting because of how it is. Um, typically, you'll want the mass to be down, so we're going to put it to be 0.4, just, just for consistency purposes. Damn you, microphone! Stay out of the well. I need to move my hands. Now, you'll just give it some subframes. It doesn't need a lot. Shouldn't need a lot. Not doesn't. Shouldn't need a lot. Um, although, in the final time I made it, it was at 25 subframes and at 80,000 particles for the sphere. Or around 80,000 particles. Because I maxed out the resolution. Okay, so then what you'll do is you go to display and display size. And you'll want to make sure that the actual size is good. So, let's see if I double the size, what will happen? Hey, good. Okay, so for the default size sphere, it's resolution of 10. You want it at 0.1, I guess. Definitely won't be looking super awesome, but it's small enough that the resolution will help with everything. I don't know. It's supposed to work. Okay, so you'll want to give it a name, so I'm just going to call it Ball. You can change the particle settings if you want. It doesn't really matter, but because every time you make a new particle system, the new particle settings name will have 0001 or whatever by it. So that's fine. Then you'll add a new object, and this will be the actual particles that will be rendered. Then we're going to turn it into an icosphere because that's just how it is. And then you'll just give it its own material. So what we're going to do is we're going to move it down. And this is important. I had problems with this before. You want to apply its location when it's below the... Oh. Okay, so for very simple sake, we're going to give them low poly and low complexity material so that we can see what's going on here. But you'll basically want to use something volumetric to give it a realistic look. Uh, and then we'll add another icosphere. This is for Harry's wand, because, you know, he needs magic, and we can't have him without his magic. So this is what I did before, just give it a green material, just so it's different. And you also want to apply the location. Then, once you have that, you'll click his wand, and this will be the second particle system. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it magic. And if you want him to do the thing where he lifts up his wand and it emanates particles from that too, you can also add another one and call that one anything else. Sparkles. 
Okay, so this one will go from start to about maybe 30. And lifetime is probably fine at 25. Because, you know, you don't want them to be around too long. Actually, let's put this at 20. Put this at there. Because you don't want these to have a lot of those. Okay, so then... For the sake of this, you're going to want to go to volume for that, and just click boy to Newtonian. Screw it, it's the Newtonian. Also, real quick, before we forget, we're going to want to give the ground a collision and give it some particle dampening, so maybe yeah, 0.6 and some friction and some randomness to the friction, not that much randomness. And you can probably give it randomness down here too, give it some variety if you want, but that's up to you. Okay, so then we're going to go here. We're going to make him sparkle, but first, before I make him sparkle, we're going to not change much of anything. So, let's go to his arm, and then he's just going to be, like, doing that thing where he just lifts it up. I'm not even going to make him move too much, but it's basically, I'm going to make him point the wand at it. So, turn on the keyframes, and then just keyframe his arm, and then keyframe his other arm, and then keyframe his hand. So we got Harry's Magic. We're actually going to need to name these balls down here. So we're going to call this one Magic. And this one we're going to call Balls. Because that's basically what it is. So okay, then smooth that one out. You don't need to smooth Harry's magic out because that's just how it is. Then we'll grab the ball. And actually, one thing you want to turn on to give it a bit more, well, I guess you could say realistic physics, is to turn on that. Okay, so now that we got this, Tony, we want it to be fluid. Okay, so. For this, you want to lower the stiffness to something like 0.25 or so, because otherwise you're going to really mess it up. Okay, so then also, uh, if you go to local, you want to make sure that you know the direction that it's going to go. So the emitter object is going to be probably at uh, 12. Then what you're going to want to do also is go to field weights and turn down gravity for that one. This one has a mass of 0.4 and a stiffness should also go down probably to 0.3 because if it's really stiff the ball will explode. That's what I found. Uh, I don't want the ball to explode. I want it to kind of ripple around a bit. Okay, so actually put this at 0.25 then we'll go to dupli object, give it the object of balls, and you get the object of magic. Then, if we just sort of scrub through, you'll see sort of what we're getting at. Okay, so we're going to want to start magic at eh, 24. Four. Then, real quick, also at the same time, what you're going to want to do is, uh, I forgot about this a little bit, but what we're going to do is, the very last thing, is just to kind of make him pull his arm back. And so basically he's done casting his spell here. Okay, so then it just goes like this, go to 50, and then go like this. Holy God. The sleeve. Eh, well. That's something that can be fixed with white painting. So, now we got this to the point to where... Uh, actually, we're also going to want to move his hand. Actually, for the sphere, if you want to not see the uh, sphere, you just go to rendered and click emitter, just click that, do the same thing for Harry's wand, because then when you render it, you won't see them. 
Although you won't see the particles either, but see? Now, theoretically, that shouldn't be visible. Um, okay. So let's rewind that all the way. Turn the gravity down, but keyframe it because that's what we want. And his wand is also going to have no gravity. And what we're going to do now is add, oh, wrong target. Okay. What is this called? Really? Still called sphere? Fine. Oh, wait. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not awake right now. Damn it! Go in zero one. There we go. Then. We're going to give this one a sphere. Now the uh, particles should collide. So at about frame 120 though, what you're gonna want is to cat is to insert a keyframe for gravity for both of these. Which is basically where I did mine initially too. Then at about 160 or so, you're going to want to give it gravity. Do the same thing for both of those. Then, when it's very, when it's at the very end, all of them will just kind of fall down. So, then we'll just bake everything, and then that should be done. Let's see. Move. Thank you. Size deflect is also something you want. You also want to give it some subframes. I'm going to give it 12 because that's Harry's wand. I also want to give this one 12 because this is the ball. And we're going to bake them all. Bake you all. Bake all dynamics. Wow, I won't even need to edit that. That's, that was really fast. Okay, so now as you can see, the ball breathes. And then it hits the ball and it's like blah. That's pretty much it. Okay, so I'm going to render this and you'll see the final result right here. Thank you for watching.